Got an 8th generation Honda Civic here. It needs new front struts. Come along, I'll show you how I do it. First thing we'll do, we'll take the key, put it in. We're going to turn on the wipers. And turn them off right there. That way they're up at the top. We need access to these covers. That's why we got to get the windshield wipers up out of the way. And like most Hondas, we're going to come from the front. We're going to go up under here and we're going to look for our arrow. Where is it? There it is right there. So this bracket right here where my finger is, we're going to put the jack right on that and jack it up. And once we get the vehicle jacked up in the air, we're going to come down here. We're going to put our jack stands right there. One on this side, one on the other side over there. We're not going to work under a vehicle with uh, just a jack. We're always going to put jack stands up under here. And it's hot today. I'll be running the AC unit. And we'll chalk the rear wheels like that. All right, using a 19 millimeter socket, I'll go ahead and break these loose. And while we're here, let's go ahead and pop the hood. All right, there's a good look at your uh, strut assembly. And then the top of it is up under here. So we'll just have to take a couple of these pieces off when we're ready. Now the first thing we'll do is unclip the wheel speed sensor. But as you can see, this one's already unclipped. It's broken. So we'll have to uh, we'll zip, that. We'll zip tie that back when we're done. Now I'm going to disconnect the uh, brake hose. We're just going to take this uh, 12 millimeter out. I'm using my impact just for ease, but you can use hand tools on this stuff. Alright, while I'm thinking of it, I'm going to pull this uh, service cap off. Just a little flathead screwdriver, take the cap off. And then uh, we got to get this cover off right here. So we'll just peel this up. And then this can pull off a little bit. And then from the bottom, or actually you can reach right here and just pull from the bottom, but this one's already loose. You just kind of pop it out from the bottom because it holds it from the top right here. And then the bottom just kind of clips in. So you don't want to pry from the top, you'll break these. All right, now we got to get these two bolts out right here. Uh, this side, the actual bolt side is a 17 millimeter, so we'll put a wrench on that. And then this side, the nut side, is going to be a 19. So we'll just put the, uh, I'll put the impact on this side. See if the old 3 8 in Milwaukee can get it off. If not, we'll have to get the big guns out. Eh, no problem. Alright, now if you noticed, we didn't take the CV axle nut off, so we got to be careful with this. We don't want to pull that joint apart. So we can just take the bolt out, and then this one, you might have to mess with it a little bit to get it out a little bit tight. Come on, yeah, I have to lift up on this just to get it out. And then so we'll separate this, but you can see... See that right, movement right there? We don't want to pull this CV joint out, so we're only going to pull it out as, as far as it'll go. If it doesn't stay there, we'll put a bungee cord. It looks like it's going to stay right there and we're good. Now we'll go up top. 
and it was leaning out a little bit further than I liked. So instead of a bungee cord, I just used some mechanics wire and just tied it off. That way this thing won't go anywhere. All right, now we just gotta go in and take these three nuts off. There's one right here. There's one in the back that we're gonna get through the access hole here. And then one right here. You just gotta get those three off. And as you can see, I already painted this one. And that, that's so I know the orientation of this top plate here, where it goes. All right, we'll break these three loose. 14 millimeter socket and ratchet. Come on. Sometimes they can be tight. And then using an extension, we get this one in the back broke free. Come on, there we go. Alright, now we should be able to spin them out. Now this last one I'm going to spin out, but I'm also going to put my hand down below and hold on to the strut so it doesn't drop. There she is. That's what she looks like out, all put together. Uh, there should be There's the there's our paint right there, and then there should be a mark a little arrow. Let me see here Now if you can see it, there's an arrow Right there. Let me see if I can clean it a little better There's our arrow right there. We want to make sure that's pointed to the front of the vehicle And if we know our if we put our paint spot back right here, we know our arrow is going to be in the correct spot and I'll be able to tell that from the top once the strut's in. That's why I like to paint it. Now, if you bought um, new struts that come as a complete assembly, then you can just skip the next part that I'm going to do, and you can just proceed to put your uh, put the struts back in. But I have uh, just the struts themselves, so I'll have to compress this spring, and then um, take the old strut off, put the new strut in, and then we'll be ready to go to put this back in the car. Uh, what we don't want to do is there's a nut under there we don't want to take that nut off without having the spring compressed because this thing can fly apart and can hurt you and honda recommends that these nuts and bolts be replaced on this strut and so i have all new factory honda nuts and bolts that i'll be using to put put it back on but i am using aftermarket kyb struts so i'll show you those and as you can see there's the part number for one right there and then there's the part number for the other one the left and right are different on the front you can see that's what they look like and these do come with a new lock nut on top and to compress the spring i'll be using a professional spring compressor uh, this one's made by Brannick. So Brannick 7400, made in the USA. Um, if you're gonna use a spring compressor, these things can be dangerous. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's recommendations to the T, because you don't want to get hurt. And wear safety glasses. Okay, before you take your strut apart, I want you to make note of the uh, top plate in relationship to the bottom plate. And obviously this is to the front of the car, this is the driver's side. And we want to make sure this arrow is to the front of the car, of course. And then this post right here, you'll have everything lined up correctly if it's right on this edge, the front edge of the strut, just like that. And so when we put it back together, we need to make sure it's the same way. I'll show you what it looks like on the passenger side. Okay, here's the passenger. 
You can see there's our arrow to the front of the car, so that weighs to the front of the car. And I gotta set this down. And you can see right where that post is, we follow it down, and it's gonna be right even with this edge, just like that, to the front of the car on the passenger side. So just make sure when these go back together, they gotta look like that. All right, we'll take our strut, take the cap off. We'll set it in our compressor here. And I'm just going to compress it down until I see it start to lift off this plate, the bottom of the strut there. And all I'm doing, turning the handles like this, and that compresses it. You can see it's loose now. Put the clamps there, that way our strut won't fall down. All right, now we gotta get this nut off. Now that the spring is compressed, all the pressure is off this nut, now we need to get it off. Now, the problem is, you can see how recessed this nut is down in there. If you put a socket on there, you're not gonna be able to hold the shaft, because it's gonna turn. And we need to put a six millimeter hex in there like that to hold it still, and we have to have some way to turn it. Now normally you could use an offset wrench like this one right here. But you can see it, it doesn't quite grab. It's hitting the sides here. If you try to use this, it's going to just damage the top of the nut and round it off. Now I could use my impact and zip it off, um, but I'm, we'll try to do it with hand tools. Now what I'm going to use is this uh, socket set that's a pass-through. Uh, this was made by Craftsman. I've had this uh, set quite a long time. Not even sure if they still make it, but uh, it's a decent little set and it works good for stuff like this. So that's a 17 millimeter nut. So we're going to need a 17 millimeter. And then I will use a deep extension or an extension like that so it'll pass through and then use the ratchet to get it on there. The ratchet goes on the top. Hang on, let me set it up. Okay, I got it put on there. So there, that's how it works. And uh, it's nice, you can just put it right over that. And then we'll take a six millimeter hex. This is a three eighths inch. I recommend a three eighths, not a quarter inch. And we'll just put it in there. And that way we can hold it still and break it loose. And if for some reason this, it's really stuck on there and you can't get it loose and it just wants to spin, you just go up under here under the dust boot and grab onto the shaft right there. I grab it with a pipe wrench. A pipe wrench will dig into that and grab it. Now you only want to do this to take it off. You don't want to do this to put it on because you'll damage the sealing surface. But to take it off, who cares? You're going to um, replace it anyway. Put a pipe wrench on there and that way you can hold it. You'll feel it lock in. There we go. She broke loose. And we'll just spin it off. And like I said, most of the time I'll just use an impact to do this. It usually spins fast enough to take this off, but I wanted to show you how to do it with hand tools, something like this. And like I said, make sure. As you can see, there's no pressure on this spring. We do not want to have this thing come flying off at us. And 
And there you go. Always replace this. All right. Now that we got the nut off, what's nice about this type of setup is I can leave it just like it is, and just take the strut and pull it straight out just like that. And I can leave everything just the way it is, and we'll take the new strut and put it right in. And it's a good idea. Always compare your parts. Make sure they're the same. And like I mentioned before, left and right are different, so make sure you're using the right side. All right, we'll take our strut, take the nut off. Put it somewhere handy. And then we want to make sure this notch right here goes right there in, into that uh, bottom of the strut. And then the end of the spring, I'm going to make sure this rubber piece is all the way over. That end of the spring is going to line up right there. So we just got to make sure those line up. And we'll just put the strut back on just like we took it off. There's a rubber um, damper in there. We got to make sure we get the post through that. And get it up and get the nuts started. All right, now we got the pin back on the grenade. We can go ahead and tighten it up. And it's 33 foot pounds, but as you see, we can't get a conventional torque wrench in there, not without special tools and adapters. So we just got to be smart about the torque. If you don't know what 33 foot pounds feels like, practice on a bolt off the car. We'll feel this thing bottom out. It's got a nylon uh, lock piece in there, and that's why this thing is going to be stiff all the way down. And this is why you always want to replace it. You feel it just tightened up right there. So now we'll torque it down like that, and that's it. It's good. And you can see. The front is over here, that's where the uh, arrow is, and this is still lined up with this. So all we got to do is release the tension on the spring and make sure that the bottom of this spring and this little triangle piece goes in its hole properly. So as you can see, now the tension's off. Now we're back under tension, just like we took it off the car. We'll make sure we're still lined up there. Our spring is lined up where it's supposed to be. And we're good to go. We'll just take our cap, make sure we don't forget that, and we'll get it back on the car. And like I said, I'll be putting all new nuts and bolts for the struts. Uh, that's what Honda recommends. These are the nuts, the six nuts on the top. There's the part number right there. These are the four nuts on the bottom. Let's see. There's the part number right there. And then these are the four bolts that go with these nuts. Part number on those. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm doing what Honda recommends. All right, I'm going to take the three new mounting nuts for the top plate, put them up here where they're handy, that way I can get to them. I'm just going to take the whole assembly and then just put it up in there and then put the nuts on the top. All right, we'll get this in.
kind of a tight fit in here. Try not to drop the nut like that. And once you get them started, you're out of the woods. All right, and if we did it right, our paint mark is right back where we started, just like that. the wire off. Sometimes you gotta muscle it and manhandle it to get the bottom one in. Yeah, now you can see both bolts are in. They're gonna go towards the front of the car like that. And then the nuts, they're gonna be on the caliper side. Well, I'm thinking of it, I'll get the wire out of the way. All right, now I'm gonna take the floor jack, put it up underneath, and we're gonna raise the suspension. Put it up under a load. And I am going to put the jack right there. I'm not gonna to touch the dust shield or the rotor. I'm just gonna put it right here. We're gonna jack it up till it just starts to come off the jack stand. All right, now as you can see, the weight's off the jack stand. So now we can tighten everything up. Now with the weight on the, the jack, we can go ahead and snug these down up on top. Come on. All right, the torque on these top nuts, it's gonna to be 33 for this vehicle. Uh, if you have an SI, it's 43. So we'll go ahead and torque this back one up first. And now we'll get the front two. All right, now we'll just tack these two bolts down. Um, these are lock nuts, so you'll feel them tighten up right there as soon as it starts hitting the end of the threads. But I'm just gonna use the impact to run them in a bit, and then we'll put the final torque on them.
All right, these two bolts, they're going to be 67 foot-pounds there, if you can read that. So we'll go ahead and get them torqued down. All right, now we can lower the suspension. All right, we'll go ahead and get our brake line bolted back up. And you can just snug this up, but seeing as I have the torque wrench here, we'll put it to the proper foot-pounds, which is 16. All right, and we'll just clip the wheel speed sensor back in. I will have to put a zip tie on that. There, that zip tie should hold it from coming off. All right, we'll put our cap and our cover back on. Make sure you put this the right way. You can put it in backwards and it won't stick very well. And then these with these up. We'll snap that back in place. Good as new. Don't forget anything we might have left. All right, we're gonna take some brake clean on a rag wipe off any paw prints we might have left behind. I like to take a second, look over my work, make sure I got everything. You can see there's a finished shot of the strut. Make sure we got everything back in place. Looking good. I'm going to make sure it's centered on the hub. And we'll pull the wheel chocks. And we'll turn the key. Put our windshield wipers back down. All right, we'll go ahead and torque the lug nuts to 80 foot-pounds.
All right, there you go. That's how I do the uh, front struts on these 8th generation Civics. Uh, if you live in the Rust Belt, you might want to put a little bit of uh, fluid film or something to keep this from rusting right here. It's up to you. I would only put it right here though, not on the threads. And uh, it's a good idea to get alignment. In fact, I recommend you get an alignment. Uh, anytime you do the struts, you should do an alignment. So that's what this car is getting in alignment. And as always, hey, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.